Stomach pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, all the things that nobody wants to talk about, but all the things that we have and will again experience. Mm. And whether you prefer to call it food poisoning, the stomach flu, or its official name, norovirus, it just plain makes you feel gross. And we're just getting started. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we're just weeks from the start of the peak outbreak season of the foodborne disease. As a matter of fact, 80% of cases of this highly contagious virus happen between November and April. Each year, about 20 million people get sick from the virus. More than 56,000 are hospitalized from it, and it causes more than 500 deaths. So here now are some do's and don'ts when it comes to protecting you and your loved ones from the norovirus. They just can't get enough of this at local schools and daycares right now. There's got to be 500 Legos here. From textbooks to crayons, everything is either bagged up or undergoing a deep cleaning. When you have hand touching, people touching their face, sharing food, you just increase the likelihood that the virus is going to go from one person to another. Vigilant cleaning with heat and bleach will, so that means cleaning every toy and every surface from desks to carpeting to walls to the area where you clean up yourself, which, by the way, is your best defense. You can use waterless hand cleaners, but those are not as effective as soap and water. Norovirus is not even a reportable disease when it's happening sporadically. But when we start to see hundreds of cases in schools or other, uh, other uh, public settings, then we would, that would meet anybody's definition, really, of an outbreak. It's so highly contagious by touch and by air that everything is under scrutiny, which is paying off. We are seeing fewer kids getting sick at school. Okay. We are still seeing kids being kept home from school mm -hmm. with symptoms. The hope is that that decreases the spread. But keep vigilant, it can get worse. The CDC adds norovirus can spread quickly in closed places like daycare centers, nursing homes, schools, and cruise ships. And unfortunately, there is no specific medicine that can treat norovirus because it is a virus, not a bacterial infection. And if you have norovirus illness, experts say you should drink plenty of liquids to replace fluid loss from throwing up and, and diarrhea to prevent dehydration. Yeah, it could make it even worse. Now there is another nasty stomach bug that can be fatal and it's called E. coli. E. coli though is a bacteria that lives in the intestines of people as well as animals and it's likely that link to animals that cost a young boy his life. 20 month old Colton Guay died from symptoms associated with E. coli bacteria. Colton's parents say he got sick after petting animals at a county fair last month. 17-month-old Miles Hershaft is also fighting the bacteria. Turns out both toddlers were infected by the same strain. This is E. coli 0111, the potentially deadly bacteria that destroys red blood cells. From there, it attacks the kidneys, liver, and other organs. CDC officials say tests now show this is the strain of E. coli that infected both 20-month-old Colton Guay and 17-month-old Miles Hersheft. Colton died from the deadly disease. Miles is listed in fair condition. His father says he's undergoing dialysis and blood transfusions every day. The strain and the molecular typing from each patient is identical, uh, making it highly likely that the cases acquired the illness from the same source. The two families didn't know one another until their sons were both in the same hospital fighting for their lives. Both had taken their sons to the petting barn at a fair. The fathers say it's the only common denominator. Test results of samples taken from the bedding of the petting barn are expected soon. The CDC is also investigating if the two toddlers ate or drank something contaminated with E. coli. They could have been exposed to unpasteurized milk, contaminated le lettuce or vegetables, uh, un undercooked meat. There are all kinds of things that can carry the organism that causes this illness. Children under five are particularly at risk to E. coli because their immune systems are not yet fully developed. The CDC is now warning parents to make sure they wash their children's hands with antibacterial soap if they come into contact with animals. Now, at last update, Miles was listed in fair condition with the family taking it, quote, day by day. Mm. Now, it's important to note, experts say outbreaks of E. coli at petting zoos, it's rare. 
you don't have to avoid visiting them altogether, but you do have to practice safe hygiene. E. coli cannot penetrate the skin, so simply touching a contaminated area is not enough to make you sick. Touching your eyes and nose and mouth, like so many kids do, is the major root of infection. So be sure to wash their little hands thoroughly. Absolutely, and it seems so minute, but just plain out soap and water are so important. You know, another thing that's important, not wasting money. So what do you do when the coffee pot stops brewing or the leaf blower stops blowing or the laptop stops working? Angie Hicks from Angie's List tells us when you should have it repaired and when you should just buy new. And speaking of new, uh, looks like piles of trash. Soon it's gonna be back on store shelves as a new product ready for you to buy. Do you know though what should be on that belt? We're gonna find out what non-recyclable has workers stopping in their tracks. Delmarva Live, we'll be right back.